You don't need to be intimidated by CNC. Today we're going to walk you through a simple project showing you how easy it is to create a space-saving pair of knockdown saw horses. To create our horses, we'll be using the Millwright Mega VXL. The Mega VXL offers the best balance of multiple pro features at a very reasonable price. We consider it to be the best value in the CNC market. In this video we're using the Vectric VCarve Pro software, which we think is the easiest CAD CAM program to learn and to use. You can draw your project directly in VCarve, but for this exercise we're using a drawing that has already been created. All we need to do is open the file. Next we perform job setup. For this project we get rid of the offset and set the thickness to 18 millimeters, the same thickness as our plywood. I noticed a mistake in my drawing. I could just manually redraw these lines. But the easiest way to fix it is to use the Extend Vectors tool. Just click on the two open vectors and just like that it's fixed automatically. Now I'm going to return to the job setup screen and change my unit of measurement to inches. This isn't strictly necessary, but it's simply the system of measurement I'm most familiar with, and our tool bit is one quarter of an inch spiral bit. Next, I'll add some fillets to the interior 90 degree corners. Fillets make it easier to assemble and disassemble the sawhorse. They also allow the mating pieces to become fully seated in the corners, which would otherwise be a problem as a round router bit cannot cut square interior corners. I select the fillet tool, then I just click on each corner where I want fillets. In the upper left hand corner you will notice I have set the fillet tool radius to 0.125 or 1 8 of an inch. This is the radius of the 1 quarter inch bit we'll be using. The program was telling me that some of my vectors were not joined. This is an easy fix though. I simply highlight the entire drawing, then I select the join vector tool. Click join, and now all the open vectors have been closed automatically. Now it's time to switch over to toolpath creation. Select switch to toolpath commands. On the toolpath screen, highlight the entire part. Select the profile cut tool. We've set our start depth at 0 inches and our cut depth to just slightly more than our workpiece thickness so that our cuts will go all the way through our workpiece. We select our quarter inch spiral bit and ensure everything is set up properly for our bit. Since we're cutting along the outside of our part we will switch our machine vectors to outside right. Now I'll add some tabs. Check the add tabs to toolpath box. Click Edit Tabs. Then, select where you want to place your tabs. Tabs are very thin, narrow strips where we are telling the router to skip over. They are useful for keeping your project positioned as the router cuts it out. After that, I reduce the number of passes the machine will take to complete the cut. The software defaulted to 7 passes, but I'm reducing it to 4. This keeps the path depth smaller than the diameter of the bit, but not so small as to be overly time consuming. Now I'm ready to name the toolpath. It's good practice to create a name that is specific to the part rather than just leaving it as the generic Profile 1, Profile 2, and so on. Then I click Calculate. We don't need to worry about the warning here because we want the machine to cut all the way through our workpiece. Next I preview the toolpath by pressing play on the preview selected toolpath screen. Now I need to save the toolpath. Check off the toolpath, click the floppy disk icon, click save toolpath, and finally save to whatever location you want the file stored. Now this part is ready for our G-code sender, but we're not ready to fully move to the G-code sender and the machine yet. There is still another part we need to create a toolpath for. Just like the first part we need to open our file.
Now you'll notice the first three steps of part two are much the same as part one. Part two did not require any corrections, so we moved directly to joining the vectors. Changing the view to inches, and adding fillets. The next thing I need to do here is change our job size to match the 35 by 35 inch piece of plywood we'll be using. We also need to copy our piece since we'll need two legs. So we highlight the entire piece, select the copy icon, select paste, then move the copied part off the top of the original part. Highlight both pieces. Next we'll be using the nesting tool. This useful tool optimizes the positioning of your parts, ensuring you get the greatest yield from your workpiece. Since I had plenty of room, I ended up moving my pieces a bit more to give myself a bit more margin in between the two. After getting the pieces positioned appropriately, we move on to the toolpath creation again. For these pieces, I need to create two toolpaths one for outside profile and one for the inside notch profile. First, highlight just the outside perimeter of both pieces. Then go through the same steps as you did for part one. Then select just the profiles for the interior notches. The rest of this second toolpath creation will be much like the outside perimeter. The main difference being that we'll switch the machine vectors to inside left. After switching the machine vectors, you can rename and calculate and preview the toolpaths. Finish up by selecting both toolpaths and saving them. Since we are using the same bit for both toolpaths, it is most efficient to select the radio button that saves both visible toolpaths to one file in the Save Toolpaths menu. Now you're ready to move to the G-Code portion. G-Code simply translates the information from the CAD CAM portion into a language that the CNC machine can understand. We are using the Universal G-Code Center available to download for free directly from Millwright's website. Open the UGS program, connect the machine controller to your computer USB port, and then open one of the two files you have just saved in vCarve. After you have your machine homed and have set your zero point, you are ready to turn on the router and press the play button in the UGS window. Make sure you turn on your router before you press play. Now you can sit back, relax, and let the machine do the rest. Repeat this process for all parts and you're ready to assemble your finished project.